Hi everyone, welcome to the next short attention span webinar. Today, Kelly, we're going fishing. We're going for the big kahuna. You ready? Oh, I thought you were talking about the Tim Burton movie. Oh, no. oh man. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. No, we've, talked doc we've, we've talked Dr. Seuss. We've talked Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. Um, no Tim Burton references, unfortunately. Sorry. All right. No, today we're going for the big kahuna. This is the one where, you know, let's talk about why we need it. Why? Why does every sales rep need to have multiple large accounts? Well, the obvious answer is that it, it, this is the fastest way to grow sales, fastest way to grow revenue, <clears throat> you know, commissions, thing, things like that. But Kelly, what people don't understand is it takes just as much time to write up an order of $100,000 as it does an order for $1,000. Sure. So then if it's that obvious, what's preventing people? What do you think is preventing people from uh, especially younger sales reps from going after that big account? Oh, I think it's fear. I think it's um, the belief that their, you know, their company isn't the right fit for such a big organization, that there's too much competition, um, that they're not good enough, they don't know enough yet, they don't have the right solutions. You know, there could be so many things. But, um, but as you said, I mean, a big fish is a game changer. It's a life changer. These are the kinds of things that will impact your, your uh, income by like zeros. Uh -huh. You know, so they are very, very nice to have. You remember your first big fish? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so it was Xerox. Really? Yeah, I did so much business with <clears throat> Xerox, and I just, which was ironic because we did all the work on Canon equipment. <laughs> oh, funny. That ended once they figured that out, but oh well. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's funny. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do remember. I, I do remember landing that big one, and more often than not, it was growing an existing account into a big fish. Yes you know, then then going and nailing some huge order. But the fear factor, you know, you mentioned something about being worthy and, and I really agree with that. I think a lot of times what I hear in younger sales reps is I'm not ready. Like you said, I'm I'm underqualified. They're gonna find out who I am. I'm gonna get exposed. And this is something that everybody is I, I was telling somebody today, that's completely normal. Everybody thinks that way. You know, you and then when you get over it, you look back and you say, well, that was silly. Why did I even have that concern? So then if that's the case, if we can just snap our fingers and say, okay, I'm done with it. Now, where do we look? <clears throat> Excuse me. Where do we send people, Kelly? Um, you know, again, I think it's the, the most important thing would be to decide what kind of um, vertical you want to look in. Um, so the, I mean, the internet is the obvious one. If you were to say, I want to look at the largest insurance companies in the country, then I, my best friend is Google. I literally, I mean, you can put anything in Google and it will get yeah. you where you need to be. You yeah. know, if I wanted to go with top 10, top 10 hospitals in the Boston area, um, the largest, you know, retailers in the country. I mean, that's where I would start. And then you just, you know, we've taught you countless times about how to do research, but that's, you know, that's really where we start. And I think the other place to look, quite honestly, is in your everyday life. I was coaching somebody recently who was into sports. I had two great calls. One was, was young lady was into sports, a particular sport, um, or a, uh, one, one sport in particular. And she went out and just absolutely bombarded this one company. And her, it was her passion for the sport that got her in. The other one was music. This one woman said, this, uh, this woman said, look, I'm really into music, and that's my thing, and I'm in Nashville, and off she went, and she had success. So, you know, follow your passion. That's not a bad thing. Um, the, the other thing which is, is kind of interesting, you know, is that you find these things very often completely by accident. It's a, it's a casual conversation that you have with someone, and then you realize, holy cow. This person is a key player at a major corporation. Like Kelly, you and I have talked about volunteering before. Mm -hmm. I even wrote a blog on this called Slouches Don't Volunteer. Mm -hmm. And the point was that the people that are sitting around the, the, the table at the boardrooms, and, and uh, these are also the same people that are working for United Way, Big Brothers, yep. Big Sisters, the Pan yep. Mass Challenge. I mean, these are people that are um, they're, they're captains of industry, and they care very deeply. So another place to, another great place to look. As far as an approach goes, 
Is there any one standard approach, Kelly? You know, I, I think, as you mentioned, uh, talking about your past experience, you know, if you've got a particular department that you play very strongly in, I would start with that department within the big organization. For example, if, you, if you've got some real strong marketing acumen and you want to call on the biggest hospital in Chicago, I would start with marketing. Um, but, and it's always, always good to look at your personal network. So I would jump on LinkedIn and find out, do I know anybody that can introduce me to somebody at the organization where, um, that I'm trying to make some inroads with? That's always a great place to start because you might not know somebody at Allstate, but your brother-in-law might. Um, so that's, an, that's another place I would start. What am I missing, Bill? No, you're, you're doing well. I would network, 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 I think, is probably the best approach that I can I can give it's, a, it's amazing to me that people haven't sent out emails to everyone saying, hey, this is what I do. Do you know of anybody? I mean, it's not that complicated. You know, give me any name, even if you think it's, it's insignificant, and let me follow up on it. Now, of course, you have to have that, that, uh, that strategy, which comes from the research, the Kelly, that you talked about. But, it, it, you know, these things take a long time. Part of the approach is to set your expectations, which is this ain't going to happen right away. It could take you a year to get an appointment. Yep. It could take you another six months after that to get a look at anything. So this is why we want you to have somewhere between five and six big fish prospects at any time and then have a couple, a one or two in the bullpen. So if one falls off, you can slide the other one right in there. And this is something I think you need to work into your balance. Maybe you put an hour a week into these big fish, but something that is consistent, even if it's just a phone call a week. Hey, it's me. I'm still here. Hey, it's me. I'm still here. Countless times we hear of, of uh, persistent salespeople who get opportunities because they don't quit. So we want to encourage you then to stay on it. So that's it for fishing. Kelly, thank you very much. Thanks, Bill. And we will move on to the next short attention span webinar. <laughs> 